<laughs> and you, you mentioned earlier that you were, you were heavily uh, dyslexic. So I, I'm, I'm dyslexic as well. I'm dyspraxic. So I can definitely sympathize with you. So I think I, was, I remember seeing somewhere you couldn't read or couldn't write very well until you were 27. Is that right? 27. So, yeah, I... Go on. Go on. So, so do you think that dyslexia helps you to be more of a creative? Do you think there's any upsides to it? We always hear the negatives of it, but do you think there are any upsides to being dyslexic? Uh, well, I guess if you look at the research, I mean, Chris, Chris Packham did an amazing uh, documentary about Asperger's, didn't he? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. They looked at Silicon Valley, where they actively seek out people whose brains are just mm. slightly a bit different. And that's what we are. You know, a lot of you, the more you ask around, you realise a lot of arty people do tend to be, you know, yeah, often a lot of dyslexic people I know are quite creative. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Spatial awareness as well. We've got amazing spatial awareness. For me, uh, maps and things, I was obsessed with maps. And I can go somewhere once and get on nine times out of ten, I can go there again once I've been there. Yeah, I'm like you know? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good. Really yeah. good spatial and I, we like maps and we like their ordered things. So, yeah, I mean, and but you know, yeah, I left school at sixteen, really unable to read or write, virtually unable to read or write. You know, and uh, I did lots of different jobs. You know, bummed around, and then eventually, I lived with a guy who was a lecturer at college, and he said to me, "Oh, you know, why don't you come? He teaches out an education course." And he said, "Oh, why don't you come back? You know, and, and have a go at doing, you know, come to college, do the adult education course." But he didn't know how bad I was. No. So when I exam. I was told that I had to spend two years doing remedial maths and English before I could even attempt the adult education class, which I did. I then did an access course and I then went to university at the age of 30. So don't let anybody, you know, and I got a good job. So it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, just pursue it. I realize some people got commitments, you know, and I, I was lucky, you know, I never, I, uh, I didn't own a home, I didn't have any commitments, you know, so I could make that jump. And go to university but unfortunately all of the funding and the tools that allowed me to do that no longer exist no so I, was thinking, I don't think someone of my age could do what i did 25 years ago and it breaks my heart because i know that there are people out there like us who just you know who are never fulfilled their potential who are probably in a dead-end job and they know they're better they know they you know they can do more but they've just not got the confidence or no one's ever told them that they can do it. I think, I don't know about you, Jack, but when I grew up, I didn't really have any role models. You know, I didn't know anybody that had been to university. I grew up on quite a tough council estate. You know, I went to a comprehensive school and uh, we were just factory fodder. You know, that's what, that, that's what we were. So I didn't really have any role models. So it, it's hopefully things are a little bit different now, you know? And, yeah. Uh, I mean, when I was at uni 10 years ago, there was quite, a, I mean, I didn't even know I was dyslexic at you. I, I went for a, just a, a test and I say test, like it was just they like, talk to you. And um, I was trying to, because I've got joint problems. So I went to try and get help with that. But what they ended up going, oh, you're dyslexic. I went, am I? And I'd always known something, not, not, not right, because that's not the right way to look at it, but, you know, something different. And then they were like, yeah, you're dyslexic. And there was quite a lot of help then. But as far as I'm aware now, all the funding for that's gone. You, you no longer get any support I, I used to have a, a lecturer who would help me and um yeah. software on my laptop and stuff they gave me but that's all gone now so the funding's been cut which is a real shame extra time, extra time and exams i think we still get that don't we possibly yeah possibly do three minutes per hour so if an exam was three hour exam i'd get an extra three quarters an hour at the end yeah and you'd always be early before the other students probably to a different room and it was more yeah. relaxed yeah yeah, no, I'd find that. I mean, I, I find with, because I don't know how I've done it, but I've done two books and I find that writing in the morning, I'm, I'm great. A couple of hours when I wake up, I can, I can chug along. But as the day goes on, just my attention span just goes and I, I really struggle with it and I have to just wait to the next day. So something that would probably take someone else half a day might take me a week. I'll get there, but it just takes me a little bit longer to, to kind of do it. Yeah, because in the new year, I'm about to embark upon my first book. And, oh, uh, great. How difficult it is. I've sort of written the first three thousand words of my first chapter, and I've sent them off to try and get some sort of you know response and uh, trying to get a book deal. But um, yeah, so for the first time, I'm sitting down. Well, I guess for nearly twenty five years since I graduated, and I'm having to write a lot of words in a day, and it's yeah. quite quite tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely, tough. definitely. And I've those I've tried those dictation things on my laptop. You know, I've tried those dictation software. 
And I must be honest with you, I've not really got on with it. I don't know about yourself or if anybody else out there has found a really good dictation piece of software, but as a dyslexic, writing a book it's very much one finger tap, yeah tap, tap. see i don't I, I can find if i write with a pen and paper i'm not too bad okay. it's that physical thing i can do but then obviously you've still got to type it up anyway but yeah no yeah. I, it's the it's the tapping I, I can i can see what you mean by that um so you've you've heard a lot of sounds what what's the best sound you've heard from an animal what have you heard like wow that was incredible <laughs> 